right, so you guys ask and you shall receive. I'm here for another cooking video, working on that series with Rob. Um, it's like midday, it's like two o'clock today on a Friday. My truck was just reading 105 degrees on the black pavement. Definitely a bad time to be shooting video, harvesting veggies, but this is what we had to work with. Rob's actually coming back into the Tampa area with me this weekend. I think we're going fishing. I think we're going mushroom foraging. I know we're gonna get some salt water. We're gonna be making another video on how to do the salt here towards the end of the weekend. So big exciting weekend here in Florida. It's peak mango season. All kinds of craziness is going on. You guys ready for another cooking video? Hold tight. Oh, it's you again. <laughs> nice to see ya. Hey. Nice to see you, everyone. It is blazing hot. What? It, it's about what? 105 with the heat index today. I'm out here and uh, I'm just looking at my garden. It's the summer, it's July 5th. And so the garden is, it's you know, it's a little rough right now. This is the, the heat of the Florida summer. And, um, but there's still food growing. If you're working with just annuals, you're gonna be having a hard time right now, but with, with perennials, there's still a pretty good amount of abundance in this garden. So today I'm really excited to make uh, green papaya coconut curry, which is actually quite possibly my favorite meal. Um, I don't make it as much as some of my other meals because it actually takes some work, and I'm gonna show it all to you today. And the first uh, ingredient is right here, the curry leaf tree. And uh, this, this is, um, the curry leaf so it's a really great ingredient for green papaya coconut curry so I'm gonna take some of those um, I actually am going on a trip up north for two months and I'll still be growing and foraging all my food um, and so I've harvested a lot of this garden this tree I actually just harvested most of it this morning so things are pretty bare around here but there's still I'll still be showing you some things uh, we're going to harvest everything and uh, then cook it and then eat it together. And this is Suriname spinach. This is one of the greens that we'll have and the, the greens themselves are great. And then you can eat the last few inches as well. The tips are, you can see it, nice soft tips. So we'll eat those as well. You can see where I harvested last time, it shot up more. So to get a lot of these plants to grow more, you actually want to harvest. Eating more will actually produce more, which is a pretty great thing. So right here is the other main ingredient, one of the other main ingredients, and this is the, the green papaya. This tree's not one of my greatest trees at all. I'm gonna pull one off right here. This is actually producing some pretty small uh, papayas. At my other garden, I've got big papayas that people often think are coconuts. They're always like, what is that thing, a <laughs> coconut? Um, but I had one of the, I've been, I cut those down to keep them short for hurricanes and strong winds. And I had saved one tree tall that had a huge crop on it just for this video. And then I went over to the garden and we had a strong wind and the whole thing was on the ground. So I had to harvest them and, and save them for the last two weeks to do this video. So I'm actually in a bit of a period of really short on the green papaya, whereas most of the year I've had tons of it. I'm gonna grab a little bit of katuk, and uh, we're gonna cook this as well. So go into the papaya, into the curry. This is, this is one of my favorite perennial greens. This is another one I like to keep um, a, a small shrub. I've got really big plants. This is kind of a younger one, pretty productive. Here's an eggplant right here. Um, I'll go ahead and harvest this one, although to be honest, I harvested about 15 of these. But this one's ready to go as well. So I already have some of those back there waiting for us in the kitchen. Nice. So we'll have some eggplant. I'm gonna grab a little purslane, get some omega-3s in there. So uh, purslane is one of the plants that I would absolutely recommend all of you knowing about. It's a weed. It can be really prolific, and it's one of the only plants that's high in omegas. I think it's omega-3, and you can eat the, the leaves themselves and the stems. So, we're going to throw a little bit of that in there. I eat this raw or cooked. And uh, this is just a weed. 
that I, I really try to encourage it in my garden. Let's see. Oh, fennel seeds. This will make a nice little garnish. I know in Indian cooking at the, uh, for really hot foods, they like, to, they like to eat these fennel seeds after meals. They're cooling. I like basil in my curries, so we've got your standard uh, Italian basil. I just harvested most of this the other day, so there's just a little bit here to, to add. And then I'm gonna throw this African blue basil in. African blue basil grows rain or shine, cold or heat. This thing is just always there and it's beautiful. The bees love it. I eat a lot of it. I like to dry it. Um, or eat it fresh. So we'll throw some of that in there. Back here, there's one other thing I'm gonna harvest and that is turmeric. Ooh, fresh? Fresh turmeric, yeah. Okay. So I harvested most of my turmeric last year and then just replanted. But I left one nice big plant to harvest on a special occasion. Welcome. Welcome. I've made a little sunshade since last time you were here. Keep the sun out of the house a little bit. It's just an old sheet. So I saved one nice one, nice one for, a, for a special occasion like today. And um, you can see all these turmerics. Um, these I planted in the spring. So this is the state they're at in July. But right here, this is all one plant. So I'm guessing it's gonna be pretty big. So let's see, yeah, this all should be coming from one plant. So the situation that I have here is turmeric likes some nice moist soil and fertility. And um, so I have my rain barrel right here and then there's an overflow valve that just brings it out to here. Nice, nice root. I've got, I've actually gotten bigger. So I'm a little surprised, but there's also more pieces in here that are just falling off. There's another piece. Not a bad yield though, so with a plant that takes uh, almost no work. I mean, organic turmeric's like 15, 20 bucks a pound. There's another piece there, yeah. Turmeric in Central Florida is um, definitely one of my top recommendations as far as easy plants that give you a great, great yield and uh, super healthy for you. And you can actually, actually, we'll just keep this plant out and we're gonna use these leaves. They make a nice herb as well. I didn't know that for a long time. So there's our turmeric. Nice, sort of small hand of turmeric there, but can't complain at all. That's, yeah, that's, eh, I don't know, five bucks for the turmeric maybe. Score. All right, so I'll show you what other ingredients we have today. Here's the green papaya. These are a little on the older side. Um, we got some eggplants. We've got the um, seminal pumpkin. I've got two seminal pumpkins left. I grew 160 last year. This is one of those most amazing plants and here's why. I live in this tiny house. No air conditioning, no insulation. So when it's 95 degrees outside, it's 95 degrees inside where I store these. I've been storing this from last summer into this summer. This pumpkin's over a year old, stored at, at how many days? Probably over six months above 90 degrees and this thing is still great. Seminole pumpkins are truly amazing. We've got some onions that'll go in as well. Um, some red peppers. I think these are Serrano peppers I learned. Um, we've got garlic. So there's a nice, nice garlic bulb. This came out of the freezer. I had stored a bunch in the freezer, so you can see it's kind of soft because I just took them out. But that is a Florida garlic uh, bulb right there. And then um, we've got holy basil, another basil. So we've got three varieties of basil. We've got a uh, general herb mix. Oh wait, sorry, that's moringa powder here. So I'll put some moringa powder in there. We've got the homemade sea salt, just from boiling down the salt water, which we're gonna have a video about that coming up. Oh, and of course, one very important ingredient, 
The coconuts. Oh. So these are foraged from uh, South Florida. I foraged these down in um, Fort, My Fort Lauderdale. Last time I was down there a couple weeks ago. So we will be uh, breaking these open, getting the meat out, blending it up to make coconut milk, which will serve as the base. So I got my coconut spike, and I may as well mention this. Might you know this might disappoint you, but this is not as dangerous as a lot of you think it is. In Pete's first video, like I, do dozens or hundreds of people commented about me impaling myself. Well, all right, see this spike? This is my stomach. It is not gonna impale me. I'm, I'm poking in there pretty good and it's not sharp. So watch. It's it's not that sharp. Now I would not take it and do that. <laughs> that would hurt. But just so you see, you know, I can even sit on it a little bit. And this is on the this is on the side cheek. <laughs> yeah, I mean I'm okay. So Hate to burst your, all your bubbles if you were hoping I was going to impale myself, but I'm not. And uh, with the coconuts, it's really just, it's a matter of leverage and weight, really. Not so much smashing it down. I would say I've gotten a little better at this. And that last time Matt was over, he actually helped me and reminded me that it's, that it's about leverage more so than it is about force. Typically, a coconut takes under a minute. This one's looking like it might be more like, I don't know, 45 seconds. So this out outer part is called the husk, which when you go to the store, you don't have a husk usually. So that's the husk that we just took off and then that's the shell. You can Ooh. hear it. I hear nature's bottled water in there. Yeah. Ooh. Okay so then the next step to opening it is just taking a somewhat heavy knife and just going working around it and it'll just crack right open. Here's your coconut meat. That's good stuff right there. The good one. I like them to be bright white, but the first one was beautiful. Yeah. yeah, I like them to be really bright white. These ones have been sitting for close to a month. Good though. Good flavor. And I will say, you don't have to do this. You can just put the fiber right into your, right into your curry. And it tastes just fine. What do you do with the fiber? Yeah, so at first I would just, I would compost the fiber because I figured, okay, well, if I'm doing good, I've removed all the fat and protein and pretty, so it should pretty much just be fiber. But then I started doing some research and I found out that this fiber is coconut flour. And it still has fat and still has protein in it. And you go to the store and you buy this stuff as coconut flour. Pay a pretty penny and here I was composting it. So what I do with this is I just throw this into the dehydrator, um, get it nice and dry, then I throw it back into the blender and turn it into a flour and then I can add that in to my uh, tortillas or whatever I make from yuca flour or yam flour. So there you have it, there's the coconut milk. Nice. How do you say that again? Milk. Milk? Yeah, actually. Is that, I, is that M E L K, Rob? Yeah, it's a, I don't know if it's a Wisconsin thing. It shouldn't be because we're like the home of milk. Milk. Well, I'm from Wisconsin and we're the milk state, so if I say milk, then that's the right way to say it.
So I had forgotten one of the most important ingredients and that's the lemongrass. I don't know how I forgot that. So I'm using the, the bottom part and then the, the leaves as well. And so what I'm doing is I'm just gonna cut that tough part off the bottom. That I'm gonna basically sort of, just so I, I wanna get that exposed. I don't eat it usually, but I wanna get it nice and open so that plenty of the nice flavor and medicinal properties can come out of that. And then with the leaves, what I do is I just break it up, work it around, and I'm sure there's better ways to do this, people that really know what they're doing, but I only know so much. Enough, but there's a lot to learn, which is why actually Pete and I really like the comments, because a lot of times you know, you all say, here's the better way to do those things and we actually get to learn. But so that's my little lemongrass pack and I just toss that in there. And then this is the different basils, holy basil, Italian basil, African blue basil going in and the curry tree leaf as well. So a bunch, of, bunch more herbs. All right, the, uh, the curry's ready, and there is a storm brewing coming in from the west and the north. So we're gonna get this out of, out of the pot, into these bowls, and be able to sit down and have a little dinner. Sometimes my curries come out just as good as a Thai restaurant, and sometimes they come out pretty weak and not very curry-like. I really don't have down the ratios and things like that. But either way, it's tasty and nutritious, and I don't know about you, but I think that's a nice looking bowl of curry right there. This is my favorite meal here yet. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, I liked this the most the first time, and we didn't film it, but now, you know, having it again, I think it even turned out better this time. I don't know what the coriander, we didn't add that last time, did we? No, the curry leaf tree too. Mm. I put I put in more turmeric probably. Mm. Um, oh, I just had a bite of the green papaya. That's my favorite part. Yeah, yeah it yeah. is. Papaya, coconut milk curry with all stuff from the garden and foraged. No disclaimer here. Do try this at home. All right, so the lighting is way less harsh than when I first got here. Hoping that footage doesn't stink. Another epic yard to fork dinner with Rob Greenfield. Everything is obviously homegrown or foraged. 98% of this was homegrown. You know, 2% was foraged, which was the coconut and the salt. Um, everything else he grew himself so another epic meal this was probably my favorite meal I've had here yet beaten here four times now and by far I'm already been a kind of a curry fan so this one's my favorite if you guys enjoyed this video don't forget please like if you haven't subscribed please go ahead and do so and to stay notified to stay up on my videos just be sure to hit that little bell that'll tell you every time I upload a new video which tends to be about once a week most importantly pound dirt